It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Denver Broncos and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's kicking off next on Madden NFL 24. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Happy to be on hand. I'm Brandon Gordon with Charles Davis. And before we kick, partner, your keys to the game, please. Well, my keys are on the defensive side of the ball for both teams. And the big one, making sure you avoid giving up the big play. These safeties are going to get tested all game long. Their job, keep the ball in front of them, tackle people, make them run extra plays in order to try and score. Will Lutz ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Atlanta. And this taken in at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And they are let out there by their mobile quarterback. And you know how scouts always talk about checking all the boxes? I think this young man does exactly that when you're looking for an NFL quarterback. Proven leader, teams went 43 and six while he was in college, has speed, dual threat ability, and production off the charts while he was in school, and also did a nice job of limiting turnovers. When you put it all together, there's a lot to be excited about for this young quarterback. Now a handoff to start it out, Robinson. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Ritter from the gun. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. A Ritter back to throw. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be let out by their quarterback at 6-2 out of Auburn. It's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. They begin the drive with Williams. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold them to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Second down, eight to go from the 28. Out of the gun, Stidham. 
This one complete to Jerry Judy. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Stidham from the shotgun. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. Holding offense. So that run play nullified by the holding call on the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. Now it's Stidham. Short throw caught by Dulcich. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. On second down, Williams. And they'll hold him to three there as he takes this up to the 47. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Here's third and seven. Here's Stidham to throw. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. On fourth down, it's Riley Dixon on now to kick it away for Denver. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little I bit don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. We're scoreless after one. Now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. Here's a second and five now from the 25. As they've got it as we resume action. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Ritter to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It's a pickup of six. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. On first and 10, it's Robinson. 
And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Kwan Williams, the one that got him down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. On second down, a run with Patterson. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Ritter from the gun on third down. That is caught, and he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. On play action, here's Ritter. That's going to be caught. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. First and goal from the three. Robinson will get down close to the goal line, but not in, and as he'll be marked down at the one. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. They hand off to their big tight end. Now he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Taking it in for the yard out. And the Falcons post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. As a former defender, I would be angry as well. Could not get off the field. Well executed offensive drive. No matter what the defense tried, they couldn't stop them. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And it's now a 7 nothing game. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Now Stidham on first down. Open man, he completes it to Judy. A little accelerating, and off he goes. And he steps out of bounds, but not before he gets inside the 35. A huge play there for Denver, 41 yards. This is what made the West Coast offense a staple around the NFL in the 80s and 90s. You don't have to push the ball deep downfield to come up with big plays, and there's an example of that right there. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. From the gun, it's Stidham. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Patrick. And he will have a first down here as they get into field goal range as well, down at the 17-yard line. 
And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Out quickly to Judy. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Stidham going back to the air. Touchdown, Broncos! Greg Dulcich, a five-yard touchdown. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. I don't think it's any state secret to know what they were saying before the start of this drive. Let's go and punch one in the end zone and go into the halftime feeling a heck of a lot better about ourselves. Let's go get this done. Yeah, tie things up, and then you get a brand-new ball game. Will Lutz on for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A drive there of just four plays. And a Greg Dulcich touchdown reception finished that drive off. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And the Falcons gonna get one more drive here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they wanna play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And just 25 seconds to go in the half now as they've got it first and 10. Ritter. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Third and eight. One more time, they'll keep it on the ground. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. And we'll see what he can do on the return. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. 
So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They are all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. just outside the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And the Broncos offense set to begin this third quarter. And it's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic, no need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. They start the second half here with Williams. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Stidham's throw here into the hands of the receiver, Judy. And Judy's going to have a Broncos first down as the tackle made up around the 33-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. To throw is Stidham. A short one of the tight end, Troutman. And a result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And Sutton will have a Broncos first down as he'll get this across the 50 to the 49. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. 
Atlanta, Georgia's the spot, and glad to have you along for the ride. Third quarter action, second and ten. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons 24. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Third and two, now Stidham. Open man, that's Patrick. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 13-yard line. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. So the scoring dried up here in the third. Nothing that quarter for either side. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Back now in Atlanta. Stidham first down in the red zone. Seven. And this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. From 13 yards out. And the Broncos have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom, indeed. Lutz with the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to 7. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And Cortland Sutton able to finish things off with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Taken at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Atlanta regains possession of the football. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 20-yard line. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time, he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. So just three yards on the completion there. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Ritter throwing on third down. He's got his man, London, right side. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to make it fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. This is taken at the 15. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Denver's offense ready to go again. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays 
they're going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 71 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. The safeties were well back there, and he had a lot of room. Were, were they in the cover, too? Yeah, they were, and the safeties were back. You know, usually they're 12 to 15 yards off the line of scrimmage, somewhere around the hash mark for each of them. But what also happens if the linebackers dive into the line, if you block them initially, that blocker can come off of them and get up to the safeties on the second level, and now you've got a big place to run the football. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams powering his way forward. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback hey no time to be a hero we're not going to throw it here just eat up that clock and if you have the ball they can't score and now right out of the two minute break we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Now a tenth carry. Here's Williams. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here now, third and a yard. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he is going to have the Broncos first, and that should be the capper. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they'll indeed take a knee. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Javante Williams, a 23-yard run. And the Broncos have opened up a two-touchdown lead here this fourth quarter. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone, I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground, and he'll take it all the way into the end zone. Lutz good on the extra point, and it's now 21-7. to seven. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Go, 
And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So now Ritter and the Falcons down by two touchdowns. Exactly one minute remaining. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Ritter looks to throw it. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. Just over 50 seconds remain. Here's second and 10. Now Ritter. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver. The decision made for him. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Here's Ritter. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Broncos are going to get the football back in great field position. This should be the final piece to the puzzle as Stidham goes down to a knee. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second